Clancy Pasta presents, I Need Help With My Hired Dog Walker, written by Mortify Moore. I don't know what to do about this. I've already called the police, and they say they can't really help me at the moment. I'm freaking out. What do I do? I left for my annual vacation and hired somebody from Paw Pals for my Maggie. What I came home to, I just don't know what to do with. Help me, please. Here are the notes. December 27th, N.A. to N.A. I wanted to thank you once again for signing up with Paw Pals. Maggie and I will have a great time together, and I look forward to getting to know her as we explore your neighborhood. Have a good trip to the islands, Robert. December 28th, 11 to 11.30 a.m. Maggie took a while to warm up to me at first, but hey, I get that a lot, even from people, though usually with way less barking. After some belly rubs and scratches, we were quickly off to the great outdoors. We passed by the pond, where she met another friendly walker. She is very sweet, doesn't fuss or anything. I'm used to smaller dogs barking and trying to yank your ankles off. Robert. Number one, check. December 29th, 1212 to 1240 PM. Another successful walk around the pond, though we didn't see our friend again. Maggie was excited to bask in the warm winter sun. Her coat shimmered all walk. I think my leather jacket complimented her light brown coat rather well. Got home with no problems. Robert. Number one, check. Number two, check. December 30th, 1 to 1.30 p.m. A little snowy today. Maggie shivered some, even under her warm knit you left on the coat rack. I'm assuming you made it because it looks really cute. Walk was cut short since she didn't seem to be feeling it. I wasn't either, to be honest. We filled in time with rubs. Robert. Number one, check. December 31st, 1140 to 1218 PM. Do you ever think about loneliness? That dark feeling of wondering if anybody else thinks about you, only increasing as the hours and days and months go by? I bet you do. I bet Maggie does too. That's why I'm glad to be able to come by and give reprieve via our walks. She was adverse at first to me. I am a big guy after all. But now we happily spend time together leaving that feeling of loneliness behind. I hope Maggie understands she doesn't have to worry, because I'm always thinking of her. Robert. Number one, check. Number two, check. January 1st. 12.01 to 1.45 p.m. Whoa, talk about snow. Completely stopped us from our walk today. But that's okay. We played around the living room. I hope you don't mind. Maggie really loves to jump across the couches, doesn't she? She's so fun. But fret not, we still went outside to do the doggy do. Robert. Number one, check. January 2nd, 11.34 to 12.30 p.m. I lied yesterday. We played around the kitchen and basement, too. Sorry, I guess that was pretty rude, not to mention. But I feel better telling you now, clearing my guilty conscience. Maggie feels better about it, too. She knew I felt bad and gave me lots of hugs. I think Maggie really gets me, you know? In this scary, lonely world where people drift apart so easily and stare into their social media profiles. It's so easy to become detached. But I know Maggie thinks about me. And with that, my loneliness disappears. With her happy, playful barks, that looming shadow of mental death fades away. And for that, I will always treasure her. The snow was gone today. So we went back to the pond. There were some ducks. Maggie barked at them. 
She was telling them, Hey you, I'll always think of you too, so think of me, okay? You have a very wise dog. Robert. Number one, check. Number two, check. January 3rd. Before our walk, I gave her some of those yummy begging strips. She told me it was okay to do so, that you usually give her some. Though I must warn you of the dangers of those sneaky, delicious strips. For the same price, you can get Maggie just as delicious organic treats that won't fatten her up, eventually leading to heart problems and her eventual death. I implore you, to avoid an obvious pun, to think about her health a little more. Maggie seemed worried about something on her walk. She didn't frolic through the snow or even bark at the ducks. She just kept frowning at me, but wouldn't tell me why. I know she's trying to hide what's ailing her, so I don't worry, but I'm in tune with her and need to know what's on her mind. I think she was afraid to go back home, like she knew this walk was a fleeting joy to an otherwise depressing life. We'd have our fun, and then she'd be back inside, with me, and you, gone, and her alone on her doggy bed in your bedroom. She'd be left with her thoughts and tremble at the unfair world that gives wonderful moments just to tear them away. Before I left, I put on some television for her so she wouldn't feel so lonely. Don't worry, it was nothing graphic. I made sure to go through all of the channels until I found a, quite suitable actually, 24 hour dog show feed. I think she'd enjoy seeing her fellows do their best like she does every day. Robert. Number one, check. January 4th. You are an extremely talented sewer. The blankets you hang on the bedroom and study walls are beyond anything I've seen at stores. I like how you embroider names on them. I saw yours, Maggie's, and sadly, your late husband's. It's very loving of you to keep him in your memories. In that way, he's not really dead. That typical lonely afterlife is no longer sad for him, and his ghost treasures that you remember him dearly. He was a very lucky man. Maggie thought so too. Robert. Number one. Check. January 5th. I went ahead and threw out those devilishly sneaky bacon snacks and bought Maggie Organics. They're still meat flavored, so don't worry there. Maggie loves them. No need to thank me. Our walk went about as usual. She still seemed somewhat sad like the other day. I talked to her for a while at the pond, no ducks today, and she told me you've been a bit lonely since Arthur passed away. She said that you have days you cry sometimes, and that it worries her. She asked me to do something about it, but I'm not sure what I could do. She gave me some ideas to mull over. Oh, she's so bright. Beautiful and bright Maggie. As we got near the house, she was reluctant to go back inside. I understood her clear as day. The house had become too lonely for her liking. Her dreams are of being forgotten, of sitting just beyond the front door waiting for the lock to turn. She waits so long in that dark room, and every day it feels longer and longer. What if one day the locks don't turn? I couldn't bear to see her so distraught, so I promised her that, just this once, I'd stay the night with her. She was so happy tucked in with me on that warm bed, her soft breathing evidence enough to me her home was no longer lonely. Robert Number 1. Check. January 6th. Maggie was right about you. I couldn't see through your diary that you still haven't gotten over Arthur's death. I know what that's like. I truly do. My mother and father passed away when I was very small, and I think even now I'm affected by it. I spent years trying to figure out why it had to be them, why it had to be me what my purpose was. I was a lonely boy in an even lonelier world, but I learned that I'm here to make things better for people, 
to give that ray of hope that splits the bleak world asunder. Your house is so warm and inviting, and you are so wonderful and smart. I can see where Maggie gets it from. From the sounds of it, Arthur was pretty amazing too. I could only hope to be a fraction of him, but I know my duty and look up to people like him for inspiration. A good way to show remembrance, to fight back the encroaching forgotten disease for yourself and others, is to put yourself in their shoes, to see how they walked and talked and lived life, read their words and listen to their music. I was ecstatic when Arthur's clothes fit me. It really helped me become him and understand things. I think Maggie, even with me being here, is a bit sad in the house. She hasn't said it, but I get the feeling she's jealous she went on vacation without her. Yes, I know you had your reasons, and that you felt guilty over it, but she's still hurt by it. You're having fun out there, by the looks of your Facebook, and she's just home alone behind that mocking front door. That's why, starting today, we're going to go on our own vacation. It won't be far. Just far enough so she can forget about the house for a while. We'll be back shortly after you are, and I can't wait for us to not be lonely anymore. Maggie and I will take lots of pictures for your photo album. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. I want to give a huge thanks to all of my supporters over at Patreon and YouTube memberships. Your support makes these narrations possible, and I appreciate it a ton. If you'd like to join these lovely ghouls, you can head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash clancypasta, or click the join button below to become a member. And if you'd like creepy cool shirts, make sure to head on over and check out my official merch store for some awesome tees, hoodies, stickers, and more. Alright. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great night. Cheers.